three very distinct things to grow my client's account to a cumulative 1.18 million views in just seven months. In fact, we took her from a measly 7,000 views and seven outbound clicks to 550,000 views in the last 30 days with 746 outbound clicks. Now, I want to walk you through the three things that I have done on this account this year that you can replicate. I'm going to warn you, this, these strategies are what I've talked about on this channel before. This is nothing new. And I'm going to probably get some comments from people in the comment section down below saying, I've tried Pinterest. I tried these things. I'm not getting the same results. And I just want you to know that Pinterest is hard. It's not meant to be easy. Pinterest is a search engine. And if you're not willing to create consistent content like this client has been, then you might as well just toss it in the trash can right now and let's just part ways because this strategy on Pinterest, it really requires a lot from you and it really contains a lot of asks. You have to create consistent content, you have to be willing to try new things, and you have to be willing to try things for a longer period of time before you look at your analytics, before you call them as not working. But how do you build momentum like this? Well, these three things are really simple. It's Pinterest trends, consistent use of keywords, and creating a mix of creatives. So static pins, animated pins, and video pins, but I mainly want you to focus on the video pins and animated pins part of the strategy. Now, we are also going to focus on a 90-day rule here. Before you throw anything in the trash can is not working, you're gonna try it consistently for 90 days. You're gonna implement for 90 days before you decide what's working and not working. You're gonna consistently use your keywords and you're going to consistently check in on Pinterest trends. I would like you to check on Pinterest trends twice a month. We'll get into that in a moment. However, you're going to also need to be checking on them and adapting to Pinterest trends quickly. Now, first things first, you need a Pinterest system. I have one already created that you can literally buy today and you can plug and play, or you can create your own. I literally don't care what you do, but the one I'm going to show you in this example is the Pinterest system that I created. So the very first thing that you have to do is get your Pinterest system and get your content organized. Unless your content is organized, you are going to be running around your entire website and online ecosystem like a chicken with your head cut off. So this is what that looks like. Okay, next thing, uh, next thing up is you're gonna create a pin plan and you're gonna do this every month that you need to create content for Pinterest. You're going to, if you use my Pinterest system, this is gonna be really easy for you to pull off because you're gonna have a consistent place to house and then make all of those plans. Now, as you get going, you are going to notice uh, it might be a little bit you know, difficult to use something like this because it might be out of your comfort zone. But once you have one, you can copy that. And especially if you have the same set of pins that you're making every single month, um, like I did for my client, it was the same set of 30 products that we were creating for with a new blog post every month. So I was able to duplicate the same pin plan and just redo the pin titles, rework the Pinterest images, and then publish the content. So it was a lot less work than what you would imagine. So this is a, an example pin plan of what I would do. Um, basically, this is the process. And then once I have the pin plan created, I would actually take this. So this is my um, content tracking sheet. I would take the, p the content and actually put it into an example pin plan. So this is the example of the pin plan. What I would do is I would duplicate this so I always have a template to work off of. And then basically it would look something like this. So we would have all of the pieces of content in here that we want to make pins for, what the status is of that content through the process, what video or what creative type it's going to be, the um, pin keywords, the title and description is all in here. And then I would also assign a pin date. That way when I, I batch do all of this and I sit down to schedule, I can see, okay, all of this content needs to go out on these dates. So I can quickly just copy and paste everything. This makes the process so much easier to manage than just winging it. So this is the example of the content plan. 
Okay, number two is to get your Canva templates and your brand photos or stock photos organized. If you do not do this, you are gonna spend just way too much time creating Pinterest pins. So here is what that process looks like. For the Canva part, you really need to have your content organized. That means your Pinterest templates as well as your photographs need to be organized in Canva. Now what I do is I fully set up my brand kit according to what I need in my business and then I have a folder that is just designated for my brand. So I have my brand kit here for my brand, all my fonts, colors, logos, my brand voices set up so I can use features like Canva Write. And then what I like to do is in the folders of this, I actually have my Pinterest templates set up. They are pre-designed and ready to go. And then I also have a folder of all my brand photos. So all of the different variations of my brand photos are already here. Now, something else that you can do if you want to is come in and actually add images into a folder that you can um, come back to later. So if I wanted to do just stock photos for my brand, then I can come in here and in, these, in this folder for stock photos, I can just create a blank design. It doesn't matter what it is. And then from here, I go into photos and there's one um, person that I really like a lot and I will oftentimes reuse her or their content quite often. So I'll just go and add um, all of the photos that I like to use quickly to this folder from this creator. And then I can refer back to these as I'm creating designs, slides, you know, Pinterest pins, whatever. I can quickly come and grab these and I don't always have to use photos from my brand. So I would definitely suggest getting yourself organized in Canva like this. Now, third, let's go back to the Pinterest trends topic. Third is looking for Pinterest trends and storing them either in your Pinterest system or in a Google Doc or somewhere. Here's what that looks like when I'm doing that activity. You're gonna start your Pinterest trends research. If you've been using Pinterest for any amount of time, it's going to probably give you some things that you could use for trends. But let's just say, for example, you are in the manifestation niche. You can come in and just search by keyword over here and look for your keywords. I spelled the word wrong. Um, if you spell it correctly, you can see there are plenty of options to choose from when it comes to creating um, content around Pinterest trends. I would probably filter that out by yearly first, then look at monthly and weekly and see which ones are on the rise and then create content for those. So DIY manifestation journal is up monthly and yearly. I would come in and I would create um, a column in my spreadsheet for keywords and for Pinterest trends for that month. And I would insert that um, item into my planner. Then over on the keyword tracking tab, you would then insert that keyword as a um, keyword that you want to make a consistent use of. So do your consistent Pinterest keyword research. The key here is to use the Pinterest trends as they are written out. So if it says spiritual manifestation, you're using that in your pin title, your pin descriptions, your boards, um, in all of those places I've talked about optimizing your profile before. Fourth, you are going to do consistent keyword research and you are going to use those keywords consistently. You're gonna use them in pin titles, pin text overlays, your pin descriptions, and you are probably gonna use some of those pins for boards as well. Here is what that looks like. Past, including a full Pinterest SEO video right here on this channel recently. But what I want you to do is simply come to the search bar first. You can use Pinterest trends to look for keywords. Your trending topics are actually keywords, but you can also just come to the search bar. So again, if we use that manifestation example, we're gonna come in and do like manifestation journal. And then you can see here all of the different examples of keywords that we can use. And once you figure one out, you are going to use it regularly. So when you come into Manifestation Journal, you're gonna see scripting. So I can use scripting Manifestation Journal as a keyword on my pin title, on the text overlay, in the description of that pin. And then I can go on to use the other examples here. So ideas, template, prompts, 
whatever that piece of content contains, you can create pins using different keywords for it. So I want you to find keywords that relate to your content and use them consistently. Number five, you are going to make your pins, write your pin titles, and write your pin descriptions. Now, pro tip, I actually like to use AI to speed up my writing process for my pin copy. So my pin titles and pin descriptions, you can use tools like ChatGPT, MagicWrite, or Tailwind Ghostwriter. If you use ChatGPT or MagicWrite, I have a free Pinterest prompt templates in the description down below. And I also have a video on how to use Ghostwriter. I will link it all up down there for you, but that is how you can consistently and quickly write copy for your pins without having to spend a ton of time doing it yourself. Number six, you actually now need to schedule all of your content. I would suggest doing a batch of pin planning, pin creation, and scheduling in groups where you're not context switching between all of them. So number six is scheduling, and here is what that looks like. Pinterest pins, and you are going to pull them into Tailwind or Pinterest or whatever scheduling tool that you prefer, and you are going to run this consistently. You're gonna upload your pins into drafts, you're gonna pull them in and you are going to schedule them from here. I like to schedule all my standard pins through Tailwind and I like to schedule all of my uh, video pins directly through Pinterest because the video quality does seem to be better. So you can see I have two pins in drafts right now and all of my previous pins from um, Pinterest our four Pinterest have also published through the platform and the video quality is just better. So Tailwind for standard, standard pins and Pinterest directly for any animated and video pin variations. You're back to me. I have a few pro tips for you as you walk through this whole process. Number one pro tip, store your pin titles and descriptions in the tab of my Pinterest system called pin descriptions and titles and reuse them over and over again. There is no harm in repurposing content that you've already created in the past. Change your pins, use the same title and description, or make a new pin and change the title and use the same description. I don't really care how you go about it. I typically follow the rule of, I always change the pin title, the actual pin title assigned to my pin, I will repurpose the same description about five times and I will change the image every single time. That's what I do. You can do it differently if you would like to, but again, that's what I do. Pro tip number two is to use Canva bulk create in batches with your different pin template designs. You can watch that video. I will link it in the description down below on exactly how you can do that quickly. And pro tip number three is to not change anything major for 90 days. I want you to implement this same strategy for three months. Use the trends, use the keywords consistently like we've talked about, and adapt to new trends as they are coming on the scene. That's why I always tell you to check trends at least twice a month when we're having discussions like this. After that 90 day mark, you're gonna to wanna to evaluate your analytics. Find out what topics, what trends, what keywords, and what Pinterest styles really worked the best, and then start doubling down on those and putting out more content on them. Now, the client that this worked really well for only had 30 products on between Etsy and Shopify. And then she had a handful of blogs, but for the first three months that we worked together, she didn't have any blog posts. It wasn't really until the third month that we started working together that she started writing blog posts for the topics that were really trending. Then what we did is we took some of her really high volume videos that were getting a lot of views, converted those into blog topics, created more videos on that topic, and then pinned those to the blogs in order to get the blogs more outbound clicks. This has really worked very well, and I would encourage you to look at the ways that you can create new pins for your same piece of content consistently. There are a number of different ways that you can come at one piece of content and create 15 different pins for it. Don't be shy. You may need to think out of the box a little bit, but I promise you, you can do it. If you follow these tactics and you do it for 90 days straight, I guarantee you, obviously, insert, I can't guarantee you here, but I really do believe that you could see a growth that is exponential for your own account. 
everyone's accounts are different. You may not grow from 7,000 views to 546,000 consistently. That may not be in the cards for you. You may not see over seven months, over 1.18 million views and almost 800 outbound clicks. That may not be in the cards for you, but what you should see across the board in your analytics are all those little green arrows going up, okay? Now, I want you to go and watch any of the videos on this playlist right here after this video so you can continue your Pinterest strategy journey.